So a number of people seem to be having difficulty wrapping their heads around uh, some of the basic assumptions of, uh, of how you need to approach this lab. Um, and, it, and it's nothing to feel bad, and it's not, certainly not, uh, not that, uh, that anyone should feel that they're deficient. Um, a part of this is that, uh, that it's actually, it actually touches on some, some deep software engineering type um, issues. And, uh, and, and the basic idea that is, is as follows, okay? The, um, and, and it comes down to, to the board, okay? So when we think of Sudoku itself, um, we think of a two-dimensional structure, right? We think of the Sudoku board, okay? Now, in our particular representation of Sudoku, we're using this uh, vector of int representation, which is a one-dimensional sort of list. Now, you might say, well, why, you know, why would anyone in their right mind want to do this? And it, and it isn't, um, believe it or not, because I want to make your life difficult. Um, what it actually is, is because doing this actually helps us in terms of solving certain problems in the program, okay? So remember, we're basing this on a particular researcher's um, bit of work, and the assumptions there, the way that they've optimized genetic algorithms to work for the Sudoku problem, rely on the fact of being able to isolate the three by three blocks. Okay, so in their particular case, in their representation, what they have is each block, uh, each three by three block, is represented in a consecutive set of nine digits in that one dimensional vector. Okay. Now, you don't have to think about that all that much because the real software engineering part comes in. And again, this is not only going to help you in, in this particular class. This is the technique that, that professional programmers um, will use for solving lots of problems. In fact, if you go on to learn more about C++ or take other languages and you talk about object orientation, it's the same kind of idea there. Part of object orientation is coming up with these different levels of of abstraction. All right, so before I go off on too much of a tangent, let's let's come back to the problem at hand. Okay, so we have, you know, so here I have um, the code that I that I provided on our website um, recently. Okay, so here's um, the various type defs and so forth, the constants that I've already defined. Um, you know, in the uh, in the project, I'm sorry, the solution explorer, you can see I just have this particular file loaded up. Um, the other bit of setup that I have here is uh, if I take a look at the directory, I have two text files. Okay, one named Easy dot text, um, easy because uh, it's sort of classified as an easier Sudoku to solve. I think I might have stolen this off of the uh, the Wikipedia page. So if I just open this up with um, with WordPad, you'll see um, you know basically a sample input file for us to use. Okay, so we have zeros, and then wherever there isn't a zero, that's a digit that was uh, given for the uh, for the problem. Okay, I also have a solved dot text, and as the name suggests, it's a solved Sudoku. In fact, I think it might even be the solved version of easy. Um, so, you know, all of the numbers are filled in. Part of the reason that I have that is um, when I was uh, when I was doing my development, doing my testing, um, I needed to make sure that uh, my fitness function actually worked. And and what that meant is that for a solved Sudoku, I should have a fitness level of zero. Um, and so I have a solved Sudoku. I can run my fitness on that to determine that that does in fact have a fitness of zero. Therefore, um, my program actually is working, which means when it gets to a solution, it it will stop. Okay, again, um, planning ahead, doing our little testing. Okay, so that's our setup. Let's um, let's actually take a look. I'm actually going to just write um, load board for you. Again, because I, it's important for this project that you make this little mental switch into stopping thinking about the board concretely in terms of being a vector of ints. Okay, if you keep thinking of it in those terms, um, you're just going to get tied up. You're you're not going to get done. Okay, and I don't want to see that happen to you. So, um, the one side note. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm going to keep encouraging you to stop thinking of it as a vector event. Think of it as a board. Think of it as a 2D structure. I'll show you what that means in a minute. However, there are um, a couple of places in the project where that doesn't hold, where you do have to go back and think about it in terms of vector of int. Okay? Those places are when you're dealing with the mutation operation and when you're also dealing with the crossover operations. Okay, So those are the two places where thinking about it, thinking 
talking about the fact that our board has been stretched out as a vector, organized with the three by three blocks all in contiguous chunks. That actually helps you for those uh, for those particular operations. Okay, but otherwise treat it and think about it as if it were a two dimensional structure. Okay, enough said. Let's get to this. So loading up the board. Um, we've done some things like this in class. Um, actually, it's, it's not as difficult, um, as, difficult as, as you might think. Again, as long as you keep thinking in terms of boards um, and don't think in terms of, uh, of vectors events. Okay, so to start off, what we're going to do is I'm just going to come down below all of my type defs. There's my, uh, my various constants, um, and I'm going to come into the section of all of my prototypes here. Okay, so I have my prototypes. I'm going to come down to the bottom one here, and I'm going to write the prototype for my load board. Okay, so my load board is going to return a board. Okay, and as the name suggests, right, there's load board, and it will take a file name which is a string um, and that will be uh, that will be the name of the file that we want to load okay so that's our that's the signature of that okay so from there I'm just going to uh, grab all this stuff and I'll do a copy and then I'll come down just below main here and I'm gonna paste that in okay so those are the things that I want to uh, that I want to actually do all right now um, I've already said I've already committed to the fact that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to return a board. So what I'm going to do is uh, is create a board variable, call it the board. And I know that um, between creating it, um, I will I will do some things with the file, and then ultimately I will um, populate the board and return that particular board. Okay, so I'm just going to have my return statement there. All right, again nothing really earth shattering and um and so forth okay now uh i'm going to do a few things so okay so i have that uh set up now the the first thing kind of comes into you know also this whole question of writing little bits of code and testing stuff out and so forth okay i mean you notice i went into my whole um my whole prototype and so forth um but honestly i haven't tested any of this stuff um and where i do that i actually just start writing various code in main so for instance you know i'll do something like uh create a board Okay, great. Now, um, then the question becomes, can I actually insert a value um, into some particular, some random board? Okay, well, let's take a look at that. So recall, we have our get at and set at methods already. So my set at um, function uh, takes a board, um, takes a row and a column. So let me do uh, those and take some value. And I'm just going to give it um, some value that uh, I wouldn't normally find in a uh, in a Sudoku board. Okay, so we can do that and we can go ahead and try this out and see what happens. Okay, so you'll notice we do in fact get uh, get an error. All right. So let's check out what's going on. Okay. The, uh, the main issue that's going on is that basically my board, which is in fact a vector of, um, of ints, um, is initially empty. Okay, and so trying to do this set at setting some particular value uh, will actually uh, will actually lead to an error because it doesn't have um, it does not have space set aside for um, for the particular values. Okay, so what I can do is to say um, right here I can say well look at I want to have a board really a vector that can store a certain number of things. Okay, now how many things? Well, there's nine rows and nine columns. So nine times nine um, is 81, right? So I could actually hard code that in. Of course, actually, if we go back to here, we can take a look and we can see that, for instance, we already know that the size of the subgrids, the squares, are three by three. Um, I'm sorry, are, are three. Um, the box itself is nine. Um, and so box size times box size is nine times nine. That is puzzle size. Okay, so I can add, so I've already have that constant in here. Um, to actually puzzle size okay so 
that's one thing that you may actually want to uh, want to sort of add in. That when we create a board, we always create a board um, with the uh, with a particular size. Okay. Now, right there, as a programmer, that makes me nervous. Why does it make me nervous? It makes me nervous because I'm human. I'm fallible. I make lots of mistakes. I do lots of programming late at night. I get tired. I get cranky. I get hungry. I'm going to forget things. What am I going to forget? I'm going to forget the fact that, you know, when I create a board, um, I actually need to specify this size. Okay. So what am I going to do instead? I'm going to create a function that does that for me. Board. Make board. Um, and doesn't return anything. Okay, so my make board function, its sole purpose in life is to create an empty board for me. All right, and that basically looks like this make board. Okay, and so it's going to do board. Here I'll call board um, the board result. Um, I have a tendency to do that, especially when I'm writing these little functions that's gonna, that are going to create something and ultimately return it. Okay, so it returns results. Okay. Now, the other thing is um, my programmer senses are tingling a bit, um, and that's because you know I've created this uh, this data structure that can store um, in this case eighty one different uh, values, and I haven't said what the default value of those things um, of those things actually is. Now, it turns out with this particular compiler, um, generally it should be zero, um, but usually speaking, it's the best practice to make sure you actually initialize things okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna use um, this really neat little function that's built into um, that's actually built into the algorithm library of C++ um, this function allows me to fill some collection with a particular value okay so I say fill and then I have to give it iterators okay so I'm going to oops I'm sorry should be up here okay fill and then I have to tell it where the start of the um, where do I want to start in the collection using an iterator so I say um, my board dot begin and then my board dot end that's the ending place and what's the value that I want to put in there zero so this will make sure that I create a board that is filled with nothing but zero so sort of really empty board okay once I have this in place, then I can come up to here. And so now the whole idea is anytime I want to create a board, I just do this Oop. and make sure that I actually type it properly, right? So set the board equal to make board that creates a brand new board properly initialized. Okay. We go ahead and run this. Um, and there were in fact errors. Let's see. What are our errors? Ah, yes, our errors are it, it has having an issue because I happen to have one of the subfolders of the project folder open, um, and it does not really like that. Okay, so having closed that, uh, let me go ahead and rebuild this, and now it should actually be able to do that. Um, yes, notice, no error when I run. Okay, so I don't have an error when I run. That's good. We've actually been able to fix that. Okay, what we can then do is actually just do a quick sort of desk check to see whether those values are in there. Okay, since I haven't written the print board function just yet, um, I'm going to have to fake it. Really what I want to be able to do is to just dump the contents of the board to the screen. Okay, now if you've, you've, if you've tried already to print out these things, right, I mean, we can try this, see what that gets us. Right. It basically says, you know what? I don't know how to do that. I can't, it can't actually just print out a vector. Okay. So we need to actually do a little bit more work, um, with that. Okay. Now I'm just going to come up here to make sure that, uh, that I have one of the, uh, one of my favorite ways to take, uh, one of the, uh, standard collections, um, and, and print it out real quickly for doing this type of desk check. Um, it relies on a couple of things. Uh, one, it relies on the fact that I have the iterator, um, the iterator function, I'm sorry, header included here, um, along with algorithm. Okay. Um, so let me show you how to, how I actually do this. 
don't get too flummoxed by the details or, or, you know, you look at this stuff and you go, wait a minute, where is this in the book? Because honestly, I'm going to show you just exactly the code that you need for this. And on this code is not necessarily critical to your understanding of, of how to make all of these things work. Um, but it is one of those things that, that can be helpful in certain circumstances. Okay. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is create this thing called an O stream iterator. Okay. So O stream, um, for a C out is an example of, of, um, an O stream an output stream. Okay. And, um, it's going to output, well, ints the types of things I have in my board. Okay. And so I give it a name and I'm going to initialize it pointing to C out. And then here, what I'm putting in is what I'm going to have printed between each of the elements as they are, as they are printed out. Okay. Now, the reason that I created this O stream iterator called out it is because I want to be able to use again, another one of these very handy functions from algorithm called copy. Okay. So copy allows me to copy things from one collection represented by a range of iterators to another collection represented by an iterator. Okay. Iterators are very handy this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'll basically simply say that I want board dot begin and board dot end. And I'm going to have it output to that location. Okay. Now the one thing that that won't do is it won't give me a nice little end line, um, after everything's printed out. So I'll make sure to, uh, to do that here. Okay. So I'm just copying, starting at the first element in board and going up to, but not including the, um, the end, which is one past the last element. Again, don't think too hard about it. This isn't critical to, uh, to your, to your solving, um, all of this stuff, but it allows me to do a very quick desk check. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let me go ahead and run. Notice there's 13 and all the rest are zeros. Okay. So I'm able to create a board. I'm able to actually, um, set the first element, um, in the board. Okay. That's good, right? We actually have some, uh, some testing going on here. All right. So back over to our load board. Okay. Recall, um, what we said before is anytime we, we create a board variable, we're going to initialize it by calling the make board function. Okay. And we do that again, because by default, the board doesn't have the space created, um, that it needs to, uh, to store all the values. All right. So now we'll do a few, uh, a few different things. Okay. So before I even bother to create the board, um, I'm just going to, uh, create my, um, create my input file stream. Okay. We've seen examples of this about how to read file, read in from files. So again, this shouldn't be uh this, this is nothing new. Okay. I'm going to call it in file and I will initialize it with file name dot C underscore S T R. Okay. We've seen this before. Um, so I go ahead and I actually try to, uh, try to open up the file. Now, remember it's entirely possible that, uh, that when, um, when we try to load this, maybe, uh, whatever file name we've provided, it's not there. The file got deleted, whatever we mistyped the name. Okay. So generally having a little bit of a uh, little bit of, uh, error handling in, in this particular case, um, isn't a bad idea. So I have a nice little if statement here that says, all right, if it's the case that there was a failure for whatever reason, um, and then I'm going to use this throw, um, command. Okay. So the throw basically, um, looks like the following. Okay. It just is going to say could not find file. Um, and then basically we'll paste in the file name. Okay. Throwing is basically creating what's called an exception. What that basically means is the program essentially halts its execution at this point and begins looking for a handler. Now we don't really need to, and we're not going to talk about writing handlers in this class. Um, the important thing is this actually gives us a graceful mechanism for, um, for that failure to take place again kind of like the whole outstream iterator. It's not something you have to dwell on a whole lot. Um, but just realize, you know, it's there to, uh, to provide, um, a reasonable error when, uh, when things don't work properly, that's all that is. All right. So from there, 
And then what I'm going to do is create um, my variable called digit. And I'm going to set it to, um, notice, negative 1. I'm setting it to negative 1 because that's a, basically it's a good default variable. The whole idea is this. If I read something in from in file and it just doesn't come in properly, um, that means that I'll end up writing digit into the board and I'll see that negative 1 sitting inside board, like a big red flag saying, you know, wait a minute, there was an error when, uh, when you actually read in the data. Okay, and that's good. That's what we want. All right, so we create our digit, it gets set to a negative one. Then we create our board, um, and now it's time to fire up our nested for loop. Okay, so just like the algorithm that I, that I mentioned uh, previously, um, it's going to have a four for every row. So um, the rows start numbering at zero while the row is less than, now technically it's nine, but again, you know, hard coding in these values, never a really good idea. It can always be error prone. It's always good to have a constant defined um, that actually gives a name to it. Again, referring back up to the top, realize we do have such a constant, right? So we do know that every row basically is square size times square size, or three times three, which is nine. Every row is nine wide. Every column is um, um, is nine wide, uh, or nine high, if you will. Okay, so I will use box size and our plus plus. Okay. Um, I always put in braces. The reason that I always put the put the braces in is because um, even though you don't need them, the whole point is invariably you'll come back to a, to a situation where you'll say, you know what, oh, I want to add one more line here, and then again, you know, it's three in the morning, you forget about this, just add the braces. Okay, so for every row, for every column, again, while C is less than um, box size, Okay, and so we read into, in file, into digit, right, just reading in um, whatever that value is, and now here's, here's that magic. Again, we're not thinking about it in terms of being a vector of ints. If I need to set a particular value on the board, I need to know what board, I need to know the row, and I need to know the column, and for that I use set at. So, set at, let's see, our board was called the board. Um, we want that row, we want that column, and we want um, this digit. Okay. And for C, I'm, you don't have to put these in. I'm putting them in for, uh, for as you're reading the code later. End of that, and this is the end of load board. Okay. So, we've written actually a good chunk of code. Okay, we've written a whole lot of code here. Probably want to make sure that uh, that this is actually running and working. Okay, so I'm going to come back up to here, and uh, now I don't really need uh, I don't really need this part anymore. Um, but instead, after making the board, what I'm going to do is to say board is equal to load board. And I'm going to give it a file name. Okay, so recall we had um, easy.txt. And so we load that up. Okay, now if everything has been written properly, then what this should do, this should initialize um, board with the contents of easy.txt. And um, it should, uh, and basically then it should print the board out in that nice, in that sort of, you know, flattened um, version using a copy. Again, to allow us to do our desk check. Let's see what it does. Okay, we have a build error. That's fine. Let's go back up through some of these things. Um, looks like it's having an issue. I didn't want to update. Yeah, this is probably because of... Uh, how I have it on a network drive. There we go. All right. So zero seven zero etc. Um, it is actually reading um, from those values. Okay, and I'll leave it to you to actually verify that that's the case. Okay. This is the basic idea and the basic process. Okay, so you'll notice now we have all of these things um, moving along in this particular. We have all of the values coming in. Okay, notice treat it as if 
could treat it as if it's a 2D structure. Okay, and the key to doing that is to using your set at and get at functions. Okay, um, one more thing before I let you go, and uh, and just to kind of show you some other stuff with this. Okay, so suppose in here, if I have another one of these, and you're gonna probably write a bunch of these types of loops. So you know, um, in this uh, in this project, so for every row, R plus plus. For every column, C out, get at, board, R, C. When I'm done printing out the uh, the values um, in a row, that's what this is, for every column in a particular row, I will output an end line. And then when I'm done, I output another end line. Okay. Let's take a look at what this does. that's starting to look like something okay notice now i have my row by row column by column type of view of the board okay basically you're probably 80 percent of the way to writing your print board function okay essentially what you're going to need are a few if statements in various places here so that you know um, so that you basically can figure out where to print vertical markers and horizontal markers okay Hopefully, that'll help you, again, make that mental shift. Keep thinking about it in terms of a 2D structure, not just uh, not that 1D structure, um, and get you started.